Uh, firstly, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. So my pleasure. Um, I guess to start off, uh, I'd like to know how how did you get started in in music, and uh, what led you to compose for film and and television. Well, my parents really encouraged me to uh, get started in music. They um, had me play the flute when I was well, maybe six or seven for a couple of years. Then my um, grandfather, he talked me into play the accordion for a little while, which was a hoot. But uh, <laughs> when I got into college, I uh, started with the guitar, which was something I really wanted to do for a long time. Uh, so I played in a couple bands here and there, and I really did that all the way through college until then I started on uh, the conservatory and the jazz school in Switzerland. Uh, in regards to um, film music, I think it was in, in 95 when I read a um, newspaper article about a local filmmaker in town back in Switzerland, which really piqued my interest of, you know, what it was all about. And so I, I gave this guy a call and basically just asked him if he was going to let me write the music for his film. And that was the beginning for me. Oh, really? So did you, you didn't, you never were into to film music, what, like just before that, it was just kind of that point? At this point, I had absolutely no formal training in film music. I mean, obviously, I studied music, you know, classical at the conservatory and contemporary at the jazz school in Lucerne. But the mechanics of film music, that was really, I had no clue at this point. And uh, growing up, did you have any uh, influences that affected your style and inspired you to, to write? Yeah, I remember, I mean, my first exposure to film music must have been when I was six or seven, when my mom bought me a uh, tape of the John Williams score to E.T., which, Ooh, okay. you know, which stuck with me for <laughs> a really long time. <laughs> I, I must have listened to this thing a million times. Um, I also remember the score to The NeverEnding Story, which uh, was by a guy, Klaus Dolding, back um, in Germany, mm -hmm. which definitely must have influenced me in, in many different ways. As I, you know, as I grew up, then I started to get into Hitchcock films and obviously became aware of people like Bernard Herrmann, which obviously I'm still a big fan of his stuff. And, uh, of course, yeah. you know, one film that I do remember listening, listening to the music very specifically was um, a Jerry Goldsmith score. And it was Psycho 2 out of all films. Huh. But it was just so different. You know, this main title that he wrote, it was so beautiful that it just, it really blew my mind and definitely made me take notice of the music itself. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, and moving forward, you've you've worked on several uh, TV series, and uh, and in your opinion, what's the biggest difference between uh, composing for episodic television and uh, film? In my experience is that in TV, I spend a lot of time away from the picture. You know, we're really just trying to catch up, writing as much material as possible with film. The schedules, they can definitely vary, but um, with TV, it's always just a jam trying to get as much music out as possible. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, having to disregard all the functions that the music is supposed to do in the end. So do you, so do you find yourself trying to fill a quota versus having music work like, yeah, creatively? It, it really is a little bit of that at, at times. You really have to try to catch up to a really crazy schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're writing, are you, I mean, I guess kind of you answered the question a little bit, but do you try to, if you're working on a series, do you try to keep uh, the whole story in your mind, the grand scheme of it all, or are you trying to work, are you working in the moment at the current episode and just focus solely on that? Well, I think the grand scheme is definitely tough, uh, but obviously you definitely take care of, you know, the tone the, that you've set in the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. So you don't go off that track too far. At least that's, that's what I'm trying to do at my end. Right. And now moving uh, to film, 
when when I, I guess when the time came to compose your your first feature, uh, what was the most uh, daunting or scary aspect of that? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, my the, the biggest fear obviously was that I had no clue about the mechanics of film scoring at the time. I mean, I didn't know what streamers, punches or flutters or any of that stuff was. So it really was a crash course for me. And I mean, the first film I did was Endless Escape back in Switzerland, which was a, a two and a half hour docudrama, oh, wow. really, you know, so I got thrown in pretty deep and <laughs> I bought I bought an Atari like a couple weeks beforehand to actually write the score on. So I even had to figure out, OK, what am I actually dealing here with software wise? And it was logic, like zero point something at the time, you know, and mm -hmm. that definitely got juices flowing trying to catch up on all this material. And yeah. Uh, so you never, this was like your first, really first experience, like you didn't, because I know a lot of composers today, they, you know, like, for, like Hans Zimmer, for example, he has a lot of people working in his studio, so people learn through right. doing additional music. So did you get to work, did you work on any projects beforehand as a, an assistant? Beforehand, no, no. And um, obviously back in Europe, that would be a relatively tough thing to do because... You know, the film industry is, is what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very limited. So now I really had to uh, figure out pretty much everything by myself. Right after this project, however, I went to the States and then went to the UCLA film scoring, which, mm -hmm. you know, after the fact, which definitely still gave me a lot of, a lot of stuff to deal with. Yeah. And, uh, and overall, what's your, your favorite aspect of the composing process? Um, I definitely like trying to figure out what is the right score for the film. I mean, my, my process has definitely changed over the years. I, when I first started out, I really just started to work with the picture straight away. Started writing to the picture really without you know, doing anything beforehand. Nowadays, I really spend a lot of time uh, coming up with material, trying to work on the tone of the film. And, and really present the music that I write more in a, in a suite or more in a popery form to the uh, directors before I ever do anything to the, um, to the actual picture. All right. So do, you, so do you compose before production if you're on that early? Uh, yeah, that happens from time to time. I mean, that happened with Zero, for example. But... Well, yeah, and with Zero, we wrote so much music before we even saw a frame of footage. Mm -hmm. But again, that could go, you know, terribly wrong, too. Once you start to see the style of the film, you might go, okay, we really went a little bit into a direction we shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. um, and, and working as a composer, because I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a musician, I, I come, I'm from the other side of the of of the relationship in, in writing and directing but uh can you talk about the the director composer relationship and from your experiences what qualities i guess make a good director right. for a composer to work with right right well composer director relationship i mean obviously every director that i work with communicates in a different way a little mm -hmm. bit uh, for me a director really doesn't have to use musical terms I appreciate it very much when a director talks on an emotional level, you know, what mm -hmm. yeah. is the character going through if, if you don't get that out of the performance. Um, plus, I really like working with directors who aren't afraid to push the envelope musically, you know, who really want to go a step further, who want to explore things maybe that haven't been done before. I think there's nothing worse than having to pussyfoot around and having to be worried about is that too much? Because you can always go back. You can always tone things down if, if you go too far. Right. And uh, do you find yourself having to wrestle with the temp tracks and directors who are <laughs> set on a temp track? Yes, that, that happens. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been... <laughs> I've been lucky, you know, I haven't had to deal with it 
that often. Uh, most of the time, people just accept, okay, we, we, we know it's temp and we get it. But, mm-hmm. I mean, there was a film not too long ago where there were a couple temp tracks which uh, people like to use the word emulate. And that what really gives me the creeps because it, uh-huh. it really doesn't help the film trying to emulate temp music. Yes, it might be a great piece in itself, you know, but once you determine what the um, overall score is, what the tone of the music is, these cues are going to stand out like a sore thumb. And maybe, yeah. it's, maybe it's just for me as a composer, you know, who knows what it is we've done. But I really don't think that trying to emulate temp music serves anybody. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard a lot of horror stories from composers, but I feel like it's a, a shared experience. And uh, when, I, you know, when I worked on my own films, I, I didn't want my composer to... I, I said, do you want me to put temp music or not? He's like, well, you could if you wanted to, but I was like, all right, I'm not going to do it. I know you don't want it. So. Okay, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. There have been moments where the temp music has actually helped moving through the film. You know, mm-hmm. it was well chosen and it, it served the picture well. It hit all the moments it needed to hit. So it actually served, even if it was just for spotting purposes, it served, the, you know, what it was trying to do. So it's not always a bad thing, I think. I think it helps, in the, at, least, at least for me, for editing. It's as, a, as an editor, when you're trying to get pacing, if you don't have a composer, you know, on the project and who can give you any kind of feedback or music, then I feel like that's, at least for me, as a tool. But yeah, <laughs> right, right. I mean, I can imagine it would be very, very empty to work to nothing. Yeah. And, uh, all right, so, and now you mentioned you worked on in the film Zero, which is, but the title has, how many, it has, like, what, four zeros? So it's in written title? in four zeros, yeah, right. All right. Um, and it's, you know, I saw the trailer, it looks extremely, a very unique science fiction film, but how did you get involved with that project? I worked with uh, Eddie Alcazar, the director. We did a uh, project called Fortune Cookie, maybe two and a half years ago together. And he basically just brought me on board with this film very early on. So we really started to experiment based on the script and based on the ideas. And it's, yeah, it's definitely a very challenging and a very ambitious project. And... uh I mean, when you when you have such a unique, I guess, unique film, unique palette to work off of, like, what what was your thought process, and what kind of sound did you want for that world? Well, with this particular films, we had a lot of discussions about how it's almost a religious movement that is going on, um, mm-hmm. a sort of an uprising, and I ended up doing a lot of research in uh, church music. Uh, very early kind of Catholic church music almost. So we, we really started to play around with a lot of choral ideas. We um, played around with a children's choir on top of a, just a regular choir, but very much based in kind of um, really religious aspects. And so that, and that became the... I guess the, the the tone of the film that became the main idea, yeah, and and from there it just became weirder and weirder, really. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's a it's an intriguing trailer to say the least. So. <laughs> right, right. Um, and, and when you when you're writing, uh, what aspect of the film? Uh, I know that every you know it's a kind of a universal influence when you're looking at picture and characters and but what 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 influences you the most is it the characters the story the cinematography like what what gets your juices uh, flowing I think it's a little bit of both I think it's a bit of character and story I mean mm-hmm. obviously you have to serve the story and you have to uh, try to uh, fulfill the arc of the story Starting out, me, I always started to um, assign themes to characters. Uh, I, I might do that less and less now these days, but um, I think cinematography can be a little bit of a hindrance sometimes. I mean, 
the perfect thing would always be to watch uh, a work print in a cinema the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of times you get these little crappy work prints, you know, with 10 watermarks on top of that. Yeah. And you really don't get the scope of what it is the end result is going to be. I mean, you don't have any color correction. You, you know, it, it might be very limiting. So I think the, yeah. um, the characters itself definitely bring about 80% of what I'm trying to do uh, in the film score. Ah, okay. And uh, I guess to to wrap things up, I always like to, to ask composers, uh, if you had the chance to score any film ever made uh, with no disrespect to the original composer, uh, what film would you choose? Yeah, with absolutely no disrespect, I would say. <laughs> but look, I've, I've been a, a Hitchcock fan all my life, and I would probably say I would love to do Vertigo. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, I've studied this score. I'm still studying this score, I would say. And mm -hmm. if that's ever going to get remade, which I almost hope it doesn't, obviously. But if right. it does, I will definitely fight of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hope you get it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. And uh, is, there, uh, is there any dream, dream project that you, uh, that if you could craft your own dream project to score that uh, you haven't done yet, what, what would you pick? Well, I mean, I'm definitely at home in the um, whole dark genres. I don't necessarily tend to go towards like romantic comedies, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always on the lookout for very interesting psychological thrillers. So that that's right. really where I where what I'm trying to uh, you know look forward to. Uh, would, would you feel out of place in a romantic comedy? <laughs> no, I've done it, you know, and uh -huh. I've done a few comedies, but um, they sometimes feel very limiting. And, you know, coming from uh, Europe, I definitely have a different sense of humor than a lot right. of American comedies are trying to, um, you know, bring bring out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tough for me to uh, find a comedy that I really gel with. I wouldn't mind doing a good romance, though. I got to say that. Oh yeah, that's some uh, great music comes from you know those big you know John Barry. I always think of romantic you know cues, John Barry. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but um, but Kurt, thank you. I'm I'm out of questions for you, but thank you so much for the time, and uh, I really you, appreciate. You're most welcome. And uh, hope to do this again sometime in the future. So. All right. Sounds good. Great chatting to you. All right, you too. Thank you. All right, talk soon. Bye.